I want you to imagine every object here in this room, everything, every surface, the chair you are sitting on, your belongings, your clothes, even your skin, all wirelessly connected, all enmeshed in a network of communication and interaction by means of embedded technology. This is the Internet of Things. It is here around us, growing as we speak. It will keep architects busy for decades. Architects, yes, architects, because this web is deployed in the real world. It's integrated into the built environment. You know, web developers, graphic designers, programmers, they had a field day building the virtual environment of the web. 50 billion pages and still counting. Now, this intense activity is coming down here to this building, to this room. It's my turn now. This is my turf. I'm getting a piece of the action. Well, in, in fact, I'm just beginning to grasp the consequences of this technology. With my collaborators at the University of Toronto's Rad Lab, we are designing and building piece by piece this world where every object links to the Internet, not only your smartphone or your computer at home. In fact, you may not even have a computer at home because your home is the computer. Your umbrella checks the weather forecast online and communicates this report to you almost subconsciously. When you glance at it casually, it's glowing yellow for snow or blue for a wet day. Maybe it will even flash to really get your attention. You don't need to go online for this. Your whole environment is already there. Yes, it is already there online for you. And we designed a blanket, for instance, for this kind of world. I'm going to show it to you now. It has embedded technology, embedded sensors, wireless communication that make it perfectly suitable for monitoring sleep. You know, being the sleep of infants who, as you know, are most vulnerable in the early stages of their life when they are sleeping. We also designed it to monitor sleep disorders by linking to an app that tracks and analyzes patterns over a long period. It communicates this information to your healthcare provider when needed, and if needed, could also dispatch an ambulance. That's why we called it tongue-in-cheek, I am blanky. Because of this <laughs> protection and security it ensures, but also, you know, as a reference to the emotional connections we have with responsive objects. Surely you have heard of robotic vacuum cleaners being given pet names and the owners are reluctant to replace them when they break down. Now, this is the kind of connection that Blanky has with you, because it knows you intimately. It has recorded your every move, every nod, your every breath. It can predict, based on the way you are moving around in bed, when you will wake up. Today, it determines that you will wake up naturally on your own, no problem, for your morning appointment. Yes, it has checked your schedule online. But it has also scheduled weather and traffic report. It's not looking very good this morning. It decides to help you a little bit just to be on the safe side. It conspires with this curtain. Now, this curtain is laced with a memory alloy that responds to electric impulses. It can be controlled electronically to loosen or tighten the weave of the curtain to let more or less light through. This morning, it comes alive, loosening up gradually, letting more and more light through, brightening your room to pull you gradually, gently out of sleep, right in time for your appointment. Now, in this ecosystem that your bedroom has become, who needs an alarm clock, this blunt, indifferent, single-use device? Its purpose is now fulfilled by a 
community of objects working together to make your life easier, more productive, also more leisurely. Because tomorrow, you don't have to wake up. You don't have a morning appointment. You can sleep late. Except that your mother-in-law is visiting your spouse, and you live in one of those fabulous single-space lofts. <laughs> no problem. Your ecosystem of responsive and smart furniture includes RoboWall. Now, this is a swarm of robotic wall petitions that will promptly constitute a privacy screen around your bed. Later, throughout the day, they will redeploy in various configurations to, to, to negotiate your needs and your spouse's and make the best use of the space available. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is way too much technology. Frankly, I don't know if I want to have buzzing robots around me all day. <laughs> but let, let me show you something. Let's go back to Blanky. Now, this is a mock-up of a small portion of Blanky using conventional electronics. It is actually exactly equivalent to this area, except that design has made the wires, the gizmos, all disappear. Indeed, this is our primary goal, to make the technology disappear. Look closer. You see how the blanket has been reconstituted with conductive fabric, conductive thread. You see how the ornamental features have been repurposed into discrete working electronic parts. The blanket has been refashioned into the technology but this is a blanket that you can use just like any other blanket, while in the background, invisibly, it is performing the function of this lovely device. <laughs> Only invisibly, non-invasively, and in the long run, I assure you, more reliably. Now, that's what I mean when I say that we want the technology to disappear. We want to replace our designs for this kind of instrument. Here's another example of the disappearing technology. We work with engineers who develop this great new technology that measures corrosion levels in concrete. You know, this is very important given the problem we are facing around the whole world with aging infrastructure. They expected us to design a case for this device. We proposed instead to do away with the device altogether, to embed it in the very substance of the concrete, so that very much like Blanky, the structure would report on its health live. It will connect to other such structures around the world, subjected to different stresses, different weather conditions. Together, they form a live neural network of correlated data that will provide information for the maintenance of these structures, but also build a knowledge base for the design of the next generation of more resilient, more sustainable, better structures. Now, you know, I say neural network, I use terms like that. I, I describe the concrete coming alive, well, not quite, but th these are metaphors. I choose them to underscore the animate quality of the systems that we are designing. Every object I describe to you senses, processes information, communicates, socializes, joins into communities with other objects. They perform with the behavior with, 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 with the, the, the kind of resilience, the kind of responsiveness, the efficiency, we, re, we usually attribute to nature. In fact, they are perfectly suitable to interface with nature. I will show you now instances where they do just that. This is a proposal for a building that has a live algae culture circulating in the cavities of the building envelope. 
Now, this is a live culture that is basically an extension of the building's HVAC system. It is digitally monitored, calibrated, and programmed to condition the building's atmosphere. It also remediates the gray water, and as a bonus, provides a bio biofuel that offsets the energy bill. Now, in 2007, this proposal was rejected because it looked like science fiction. Well, only recently in Germany, a building using the, a very similar technology was just completed. This is not science fiction anymore. Now, here is another example where we bring architecture and nature together. This time to reinvent and exploit what is arguably the most underutilized piece of real estate we have, the ceiling. This is a domesticated nature. It is on automated life support. It is here to enhance the quality of the air you breathe. It oxygenates, it detoxifies, it humidifies, it dehumidifies as need be. It is a living, breathing, thinking, building material that cares for your health and delights your senses. You know that smell that you get after the rain? This is geosmin, a chemical compound released by the wet soil. It is now known to have a mild antidepressant quality. The style will give you a little whiff of geosmin every time it rains outside. It knows all about the weather because it chats with that clever umbrella I mentioned earlier. You remember that umbrella? Well, it knows when to, right just in time, water the moss in your ceiling with every rainfall to deliver this very simple pleasure that brings you closer to nature and lifts your spirit. We take this digitally augmented tile even further, extending it 12 kilometers, spiraling up around a high-rise structure. We plant it with vine trees. Embedded technology enables the simultaneity of condo living and automated industrial agriculture, because this is a vertical vineyard, a vertical winery, combined with a high-rise apartment building. Now, at the beginning of this talk, I ask you to imagine a world where every object is part of the Internet of Things. Maybe this is not so easy. It's maybe too early. To be honest, I don't see the entire picture yet. But what I do see is certainly not overwhelmed with technology. The world I see is not cluttered with devices, with appliances, with electronic parts, with computers. They're all gone. Gone, we are staging their disappearance. We are embedding them in communities of objects, in ceiling tiles, in floor pavers, all working together to ensure that this vertical vineyard is going to yield the most exquisite wine. Vertical vineyards wine. <laughs> For you to kick back and enjoy as you take the spectacular view of the city from your 50th floor apartment. And it's all framed by the beautiful vine trees. Now, this is how I see the Internet of Things. Now, would you please join me in this vision and let's share this wine. It has just tweeted that it's ripe and ready for your enjoyment. <laughs> Thank you.